Yep, feels like a Batman Begins night. I wonder if he's ever going to review Batman Begins. I wonder if he's finally going to buy me a unicorn. Deadpool, shut up about the unicorns. I'll shut up about unicorns when you shut up about Rachel. Would you two quit your petty squabbling? It's unpatriotic. Hey, Icebox, it's 2017. There's nothing more patriotic than petty squabbling. Don't you watch the news? Deadpool, shut the fuck up. Ooh, Wolvie, ever since you went rated R, you got a potty mouth. Batman, if you don't shut Deadpool up, I'm gonna slit all of your throats, I swear to God. Swear to me. Admit it, Nine Inch Nails, you walked right into that one. It's amazing that I don't have a review for this movie on my channel. It's one of my all-time favorite movies, and I think most people know that I love Batman Begins, and I think most everyone does love Batman Begins. It's kind of hard not to. It's destined to be a classic of the superhero genre. They got Batman right, finally. Like, yeah, the Keaton Batmans are fun and enjoyable, but besides the animated and amazing Batman Mask of the Phantasm, they had never explored his origins on the big screen before until this film. And Nolan got it so right that he changed the film industry. Not just superhero and comic book movies, but a lot of other films all had to suddenly be dark and gritty. Now you can say that that's a bad thing, and in some ways it was. A lot of reboots of many things tried to be Batman Begins, and they just couldn't do it. Batman Begins was the first time that I cared just as much about Bruce Wayne as I did about Batman. I love me some Michael Keaton, I think he's great but I never really gave a shit about his Bruce Wayne. And that's partly due to the writing of those films. But in this film, I cared a lot about Wayne and his family. I got to see his upbringing, his relationship develop with his parents, who of course are tragically murdered, and the blossoming relationship with Rachel from a very young age. Getting to know Alfred and the way he suffered with dealing with the trauma of what happened to his parents. All of that great storytelling led to something that was really rare for myself at the time wanting to see more of the person behind the mask and less of the superhero. I love Batman and every time he's on screen kicking ass, I mean, it's amazing. But rarely in superhero films at that time were you as invested in the people behind the masks. You're usually just waiting for the superheroes to come out and have really awesome action scenes. That's how it was back in the day. Batman Begins and Raimi's Spider-Man movies and Brian Singer's first few X-Men films showed us that you really could care about the people behind the costumes and that comic book movies had a lot of storytelling power to offer. The character of Batman on the big screen has been blessed with some fantastic music. Danny Elfman's themes are still iconic. Say what you want about Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, Elliot Goldenthal's music for those films is really good and Hans Zimmer and James Newton Howard combined to make my favorite Batman theme. I still listen to Molossus on the highway, and that's a dangerous song to be listening to on the highway because you can really start speeding, and I have done that before, and it's... I have to be very careful when I listen to this soundtrack because it's just that good. I gotta be honest, I sat down for this review and I was like, is this really a necessary review for me to film? Everybody pretty much knows I love this movie. Critics and fans loved it too. I have a review that's on my buddy's channel, The Schmoes Know. We did a Batman series back in the day, back in 2012, about five years ago. I don't have one on this channel, and I wanted one on this channel, an updated one that was here on my channel for people to watch. But at the same time, what really new can I say about Batman Begins? I must be honest, it's, it's all been said. Wayne, when he's training with Liam Neeson in the mountains, Ken Watanabe, that incredible sequence where he learns to be a ninja, essentially. His return to Gotham and revealing himself to Falcone. My favorite shot in the entire film as the camera pans around Batman perched atop a building. The culmination of people coming together in the finale to work together as a team to get to that great moment where Batman says, I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. It's just, uh, it's goosebumps everywhere. This this movie is filled with moments like that. It's also a very funny film. It's not drowned in darkness. There's a lot of great moments of humor like nice coat and things like that that just keep the film 
having some levity where you can enjoy the experience and not feel like you are so depressed from this this character's horrible life. Years later, I have barely a single flaw with this movie that I can really pinpoint. There's one scene that has always bugged me, a very awkward edit, and it's this scene. I need you to take a look at this. Have you uh, seen him yet? Who? Wayne. It's been over the news. He's back. I'm sure you realize I can't stop the big machine. It's such an odd edit. I never liked that from the very beginning, but that's just one of those little nitpick moments that doesn't have much to do with the story. But if I really got down and dirty with trying to nitpick Batman Begins, that edit bugs me. They got the character so right, and all these years later, I've come to appreciate the film far more than I did when I first saw it, and my grade has also boosted since my review with the Schmoes No. Despite the fact that I have given pretty much every Christopher Nolan movie I've reviewed except for following in this series my highest grade, I'm not gonna hold back now and lie about how I feel. Batman Begins deserves an A+. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to my review of Dunkirk very soon, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.